the Central Valley of California has long been one of the most productive agricultural regions of the world. But this past winter brought historic amounts of rain and snow to the state, dramatically transforming a huge part of this prosperous farmland into one of the largest freshwater lakes west of the Mississippi River. This is Tulare Lake, and today we're gonna fly over it and learn more about it. Grumman 244, Echo Romeo, Bonnie Chart 1 2 Alpha, ready for departure. Grumman 244, Echo Romeo, Wyman Tower, up on way 1 2, clear for takeoff. It's a tale as old as time. Mankind has always attempted to control nature, but ultimately, it's nature that's in control. And that's what's happening in California right now. For thousands of years, Tulare Lake covered an area over 600 square miles and was surrounded by marshland. It was a thriving ecosystem for plants, animals, and Native Americans alike. But starting in the mid-1800s after the gold rush, Immigrants settled in this valley and began to transform the landscape into the agricultural powerhouse that it is today. Canals were built to divert water for farmland, and by the early 1900s, the lake was completely drained. Around that time, a man named James G. Boswell bought up most of the drained land and built up one of the largest cotton fields in the world. Today, the J.G. Boswell Company owns 150,000 acres of land, primarily in the Tulare Lake Basin. Besides cotton, they grow fruits and nuts and are one of the largest tomato growers in the U.S. Unfortunately for Boswell, much of the land sitting under this newly formed lake belongs to them. This is what the land looked like in 2022. And this is what it looks like today. But I guess that's what happens when you farm land that was, according to nature, supposed to be a lake. About 15% of California's tomatoes are grown on the land that is currently underwater. Just east of the Tulare Lake Basin, you can find the Sierra Nevada Mountains, home to many of the tallest peaks in the country. After the wet winter season, these mountains act as a natural water storage area in the form of snowpack. As the temperatures rise, the snowmelt from these mountains supply the valley with a large portion of its water needs. Snowmelt in the Tulare Lake Basin is fed primarily from four rivers the Kings River, Cahuilla River, the Tule River, and Kern River. These rivers flow from the Sierra into holding reservoirs and are then normally released into the valley, branching off into a mind-numbingly complex network of rivers, canals, and pipes to feed the thirsty towns and farmlands. California typically receives 75% of its annual precipitation in the winter and this past winter was one of the wettest on record. As of mid-June, this year's rainfall amount is the third highest ever recorded. The winters of 1969 and 1983 both had slightly more rain, and while the resurgence of Tulare Lake occurred both of those years, they didn't reach the lake size of 2023. Currently, the Southern Sierra snowpack is 511% of normal for this time of year, with a snow water equivalent of 8.8 .8 inches. 
That means there's over eight inches of liquid water still up in those mountains, ready to melt and come down into the valley. Today, the lake is about 178 square miles in size, almost as large as Lake Tahoe, with an average depth of about 25 feet. Levees so far have prevented the flooding of nearby towns such as Corcoran with a population of 22,000. The irony about all this excess water is that this region has actually been struggling with a water shortage because of all the drought conditions for the past several decades. And they've been increasing their dependence on pumping groundwater to meet their water needs. The increased reliance on groundwater pumping has actually caused the land to sink, a condition known as subsidence. This valley is actually sinking faster than almost any other place on Earth, nearly two inches a month in some areas. The newly reformed Tulare Lake isn't expected to go away anytime soon. Estimates have it remaining for another two years, partially due to the thick clay underground where the lake used to be, leaving evaporation as the primary method for the water to dissipate. But it's not all doom and gloom for the area. The good news is officials have said the lake has now reached its maximum size, and luckily the spring temperatures have been mild, so the snowmelt wasn't as bad and as catastrophic as they thought it could be. But the danger isn't completely over. El Nino atmospheric conditions have returned in 2023 with a high probability of it being much stronger than average. This translates to above average precipitation this winter with an increased flood risk. So keep an eye on Tulare Lake, as this story is still being written, because it's Mother Nature who ultimately determines the fate of Tulare Lake. If you want to learn more about Tulare Lake, go check out Blanco Lirio's YouTube channel. He's made a great series of videos that takes a deeper dive into what's been going on at Tulare Lake. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.